In this video, we are going to solve a few problems on Faraday's laws of electrolysis. Okay, so let's jump on to our first question which says, an aqueous solution of HCl is electrolyzed using a 15 ampere current for 1 hour. What is the volume of hydrogen gas that is evolved at the cathode at STP? In an aqueous solution of hydrochloric acid, we have H plus ions, Cl minus ions and water. At the cathode, H plus ions are getting reduced to form hydrogen gas. But this is not the only reaction that happens. There is a competing reaction where the reduction of water takes place. Now how do we figure out which among them takes preference? For that we need to look at their electrode potentials, right? Now the electrode potential for this reaction is 0 volts, whereas for the reduction of water it is minus 0.83 volts. So clearly that reaction would be preferred which has a greater value of the electrode potential, right? So at the cathode reduction of hydrogen ions is preferred. Similarly at the anode you have two competing reactions happening which is oxidation of chloride ion to form chlorine gas as well as the oxidation of water to form oxygen gas. Now if you look at these reduction potentials we know that this reaction of oxidation of water would be preferred over chlorine because it has a lower value of electrode potential. Now although from these reduction potential values you would see that this reaction or the oxidation of water would be preferred, in reality it is the oxidation of chloride ion that would be preferred at the anode and this is because of some practical constraints like the higher over potential value of oxygen gas as compared to chlorine gas, the effects of concentration and so on. Anyway, we won't get into the details of what over potential is or why this preference takes place because that is a completely tangential topic. Instead, we would focus on our question and get back to this reaction that is actually happening at cathode and figure out what volume of hydrogen gas is evolved. Okay? And from this reaction, you can see that 2 moles of electrons are required to produce 1 mole of hydrogen gas. But how many moles of electrons are available to us? For that, we can use this equation where n is equal to q by f. q is the total charge that is passed through the solution and f of course is the Faraday's constant. And how can we find the value of q? By simply using the formula current into time divided by f. Now the current that is passed through the solution is 15 amperes and it is passed for 1 hour which is 3600 seconds and when you divide this by the Faraday's constant which is 96,500 coulomb per mole we get the final value as 0.56 moles. So we have a total of 0.56 moles of electrons that is passing through the solution and if 2 moles of electrons produce 1 mole of hydrogen gas 0.56 moles of electrons would give us how many moles of hydrogen gas? That is 0.28 moles. Okay, but we are not looking for the number of moles of hydrogen gas that is formed at the cathode. We are actually looking for the volume of hydrogen gas that is evolved, right? And we know that 1 mole of a gas at STP occupies a volume of 22.4 liters. So what would be the volume occupied by 0.28 moles of hydrogen gas? It's a simple calculation and you will get the final volume as 6.272 liters. Alright, so let's look at one more question. The second question says, three cells each containing molten aluminum chloride KCl and MgCl2 are connected in series and a current of 9.65 amperes is passed through these cells for 4 hours. Now what is the molar ratio in which aluminum, potassium and magnesium are deposited at their respective electrodes? So you can see that 9.65 ampere current is passed through these cells for 4 hours. So let's figure out the total charge that is passed through the cell. Okay, And how do we do that? We use the formula Q is equal to I into T. By substituting the values of current and time in this particular equation, we get this as the total charge that is passing through the cell. And from this value of charge, we can figure out the total moles of electrons that is passing through the circuit that is available for the reduction of these electrolytes. And we can find that out by using the formula Q is equal to NF and on rearranging this, we get the number of moles of electrons which is equal to Q by F and by substituting the values of Q here and by dividing it with the Faraday's constant, we get 1.44 moles of electrons. So basically we have 1.44 moles of electrons that will be used to deposit aluminium, potassium and magnesium at their respective electrodes. 
but how many moles of electrons are required for the reduction of these metals? For that we need to look at their half reactions. So from the previous calculations we have figured that we have a total of 1.44 moles of electrons that is passing through the circuit and from the half reaction of aluminium we can see that 3 moles of electrons are required to deposit 1 mole of aluminium and 1.44 moles of electrons would deposit how much aluminium? A simple cross multiplication will give you the value as 0.48 moles. Similarly, we can write down the half reactions of potassium and magnesium and figure out the amount of metal that is deposited at each electrode. So the number of moles of potassium deposited would be 1.44 moles whereas the number of moles of magnesium deposited would be 0.72 moles. Therefore, the molar ratio in which aluminium, potassium and magnesium are deposited is 0.48 is to 1.44 is to 0.72. Now we can simplify this ratio by dividing it with the smallest number 0.48. So that would be 1. 1.44 divided by 0.48 would be 3 and 0.72 divided by 0.48 would be 1.5. And when you multiply this by 2, we get the final molar ratio in whole numbers as 2 is to 6 is to 3.